I'm joined now by Lance Foreman. He's a former MEP. Uh, Lance, thank you so much for joining me. You've, you've heard the announcement. First of all, let's get stuck in with Grant Shapps. Now, he has just uh, announced that he is going to go gunning for the leadership. Well, what do you make of that? Uh, well, it's not completely surprising. I mean, a lot of people throwing their hats into the ring. Um, I think I think a lot of people out there are very unhappy about HS2, actually. So it'll be quite interesting to see what he has to say about that, because, of course, you know, he's been the minister behind it. Uh, there's a lot of people that think that's been a complete and utter waste of, you know, £110 billion to get people from the north of England to London 10 minutes quicker. So um, I think he'll, you know, he'll have to spend quite a bit of time uh, uh, trying to defend that. It is crazy. And I'm, I'm hoping that whoever becomes leader next actually completely ditches that policy. Well, there's also the issue of smart motorways that he seems to be sort of pressing ahead and the fact that you can't really get to speak to anybody for uh, the Department of Transport or whatever they're called now, whether they are... Uh... Highways England, or they've changed their name a few times, spent a lot of money on the advertising. So it'll be interesting not, to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting yeah, to not, see. They're not very smart. And indeed, I would say that, uh, you know, if you're a driver in the UK, you're, you're probably having the worst time ever, uh, you know, for so many different reasons. Being a driver nowadays is not very pleasant. And of course, with all the, uh, the, the duties, all the green taxes on fuel, it's just, you know, it's just making life very difficult for drivers, for the haulage industry. Um, so tr transport's not one of the uh, the strong points of this uh, of this Tory government. There's a lot to be done. Mm. Interesting. Well, I want to ask you whether you're worried that it's concerned with the red wall seats because uh, a lot of people have turned around. I'm not surprised that, not surprised they have and said that uh, they feel that, that uh, the Tory party has stabbed Boris Johnson in the back and then some of them are even trying to press for Boris Johnson to leave immediately, which I, I don't think is a good idea, especially if they want to keep the support of the red wall. Do you think that um, the Tories should be worried about that? Um, well, it, again, it, it really depends on who Boris is replaced with. I mean, there's no question that, you know, the Red Bull, they love Boris because he was a strong character. He had charisma. You know, he, um, you know, I, I understand that loads of people in the, in the Red Bull have named their pets after Boris, which uh, they might have to rename uh, uh, after the next uh, leadership. But um, no, they, they were a fan of Boris, but I say that, but um, I think a lot of them have felt over the last... Uh, probably a year or so, that actually Boris hasn't been delivering Brexit in the way uh, he might have done. I think they've been unhappy with his sort of complete, you know, derangement over all the green stuff. Um, you know, there's a, lot of, there's a lot of support for fracking in the north of England. It would create tons of jobs. Um, and the cost of living is the biggest issue. And, you know, our, 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 both the, all the borrowing that the Conservatives have done under Boris and particularly under Rishi and our energy policy has led to a ridiculous, you know, a, a rise in the cost of living. So we need a leader um, that's going to deal with that. Personally, I think there is only one, actually, that, that is really sound on economic policy. And, and I think that's Liz Truss. And she's a, she's a Brexit convert. And sometimes you find that the converts are you know, even more passionate about it than the people that sort of came along at the, at the outset. She might be doing a Theresa May, though, mightn't she? Because Theresa, she might be doing a Theresa May. I mean, Theresa May pretended that she was converted and then it was clear that she simply wasn't and didn't really want to get in everything, anything done. Listen, I mean, a lot well, of people in the Red Bull say that... A lot of people... No, no, you, you feel that. I, I've actually been following, uh, uh, following uh, Liz for about eight years now. She used to be the food minister, and obviously I'm in the food business. So I've taken quite a close interest. And I've heard speeches she's delivered over the last five or six years. And, you know, I know people joke about her doing her photographs looking like Thatcher. But I tell you what, if you li read and listen to those speeches, they are the most Thatcherite and sort of free market speeches I've heard. And... and and you have to remember, back in 1983, Thatcher won more seats across the UK than Boris did. You know, a lot of those seats of the Red Wall were supportive of Thatcher. They, you know, they're aspirational voters. Mm, I don't know, I've still got a bad taste in my mouth after Theresa May. But, I mean, what do, do you think, though, a lot of the Red Wall seat people say that they voted uh, because of Boris? See, and this is the thing. So what's stopping Labour from swooping in and rebuilding the Red Wall and trying to pretend that they're, they're going to be... Um, you know, doing what they should traditionally be doing? I think it's up to the next leader uh, to prove that they can deliver. You know, Boris did his job. You know, he got Brexit done. But getting Brexit done isn't actually seizing the opportunities of Brexit. And we've only started on that. You know, he, yes, again, Liz Truss was the one. She did the trade deals. But we haven't started on the deregulation. And we actually need to seize the opportunities of being independent now. 
So you need somebody that can buy into that. And, you know, we've got two years to prove that actually we can deliver. And I think the Red Bull will come with us. You know, the, the Labour, you know, Labour Party are hardly the most inspiring at the moment. You know, most of the front bench were in Corbyn's government, supporting Corbyn for leader. So, you know, I, I don't think that uh, it's not as though we've got a particularly strong opposition to fight. So I think it really is up to the next leader. And I think that uh, if you get somebody that appeals, you know, somebody that's supported Boris um, and somebody that appeals to those Red Bull voters, somebody more, you know, more in tune with, you know, uh, Liz than somebody like Rishi Sunak, who's been you know, increasing taxes, making the cost of living so much harder for people. Um, I think we're actually in a, you know, quite a strong position. Well, OK, Lance Wollaston, thank you for your view. That's uh, former MEP Lance Borman. Right, let's uh, have a chat with Scarlett McGuire. She's a former Labour media advisor and a writer. Uh, Scarlett, right, I mean, y you must be very happy about this, that uh, uh, finally they got rid of Boris. I would have thought most Labour supporters would be... actually would rather he was still there. But now we've got Grant Shapps. He's uh, chucked his hand in the ring. Um, what do you think? Actually, I do agree with Lance about Grant Chaps and uh, and HS2. I just, I mean, I, I, the thought of somebody uh, trying to appeal to the Red Wall to the North when they're spending billions on HS2 and there is almost, I mean, the, the transport infrastructure in the North is terrible. They don't want to come to London. They just want to go, you know, they want to go to Leeds and Manchester and Sheffield. It is terrible, the rail system across across the north and actually grant chaps has had has had years to put it right and and it hasn't been there and and we shouldn't be concentrating on on you know a big shiny project that is pretty meaningless and is opposed in the north and the south well, what do you think then so the red wall which was traditionally a labor stronghold they I... completely lost that uh, during the last election and the tories Took hold. Do you think that um, they'll lose it again, especially after Boris has departed? Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't think that Boris Johnson makes as much a difference as you do. I think. I think we have to remember there were two things that lost Labour the Red Wall. One was having Jeremy Corbyn as leader. There was no question that on the doorstep, a lot of people in the North and the South were very, very angry. Uh, that they were expected to vote for a party that had Jeremy Corbyn as leader over and over again. That's what people canvassing experienced. Um, and secondly was Brexit. Is uh, And particularly in the Red Wall seats, mm. they were pro-Brexit. And what they thought was that Brexit would make a difference to them, a real difference, that they would see the new hospitals, the factories would come back, the jobs would come back. I mean, frankly, the train services would run better, the buses would run better, and that hasn't happened. So it's 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 the fact. It, I, I think. I mean, of course, there are people who think Boris is wonderful, but frankly, there were people who thought Jeremy Corbyn was wonderful. I do not believe, like most of the Tory MPs, that Boris is a winner anymore, and we saw that in the local elections, the voting there. And we saw that in Wakefield. 